Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Al YouTube channel and in today's video I'm going to tell you all about the new mini bundle from Not Too Shabby and show you an awesome stencil that I designed for it. I hope you'll stick around and find out more. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. Up on the Not Too Shabby site today is a brand new mini bundle. And let me tell you, it is so adorable. Not only are there cute stamps, ephemera, and pattern paper, but I've also designed a special stencil to go with it, which today, after I show you what's in the bundle, I'm gonna show you how that works and make a quick and easy card. If after watching my video today, you're interested in finding out more about this mini bundle, I would suggest clicking on that link in the description box below pretty quickly because I'm sure this one will go fast. Now, while you're there, I do have a coupon code for 10% off most items in the store. And hey, they have lots of other great brands and their own products if you wanted to check that out as well. This new mini bundle is called Gingerbread Kisses, and you get a package of ephemera, a four x six clear stamp set, a six x six paper pad, and the stencil I designed, which is hanging out here in the background, just giving you a little peek at it right now. You can also add to this the coordinating dies for this stamp set. This would cut out all of the images and the sentiments, and I do plan on using this today for my card. Let's go ahead and take a closer look at each of the items and then I'll get started on my card. Here's a look at all of the adorable ephemera in the kit. I like that it sticks with the color palette of the paper pad, which is kind of like a pinkish red and then an aqua color. It is so pretty. I love all of the different gingerbread themes. Like look at this cute little house. You have lots of candies, you have some drinks and even a little jar of goodies here. Now these would make great accents on scrapbook pages, if you do tags, loaded envelopes, journaling, but they also help you make quick and easy cards. You can just make a nice background and then add a piece or two of this to finish it off. The adorable stamp set in the bundle is called Gingerbread Hugs, and it comes with three main images, four sentiments, and it even has a to and from, so if you're gonna make tags like I was just talking about. I love these adorable penguins and those gingerbread. I can't wait later to show you how I'm gonna use one of these. And finally, the paper pad. Again, it has kind of the pinky red and the aqua colors with a whole bunch of gingerbread and candy thrown in. That's probably why it's called Gingerbread Kisses. Let's do a quick flip through of this. So the paper pad has 24 sheets. There are two of 12 designs. Not only do I love the pages with the adorable images, but there are also some great solids, including some coordinating ginghams and some coordinating faux glitter paper. This is my favorite glitter paper. Now let's talk about my stencil. And if you were watching the World Card Making Day live hop over the weekend, you've already seen it and heard my thoughts behind it. And by the way, if you haven't watched that, I'll link it in the description box below. I have the whole playlist down there and it was tons of fun, so I hope you'll check those videos out. 
But when Jamie, the owner of Not Too Shabby, reached out to me to design a stencil for this bundle, she usually gives me some leeway. And one thing I noticed in here was all of the gingham papers. And who doesn't love a gingham, right? Well, I thought, what if we could make our own gingham paper? And basically gingham is just lines made and then rotated, right? 90 degrees. So that is a stencil I've created. Let's go ahead and take a look at it. Here is a look at my latest stencil, the Gingham Background Builder Stencil. Like I mentioned, it is just a stencil with straight lines, but if you ink it this way and then rotate it and ink it the other way, you can have gingham in any color. You could make rainbow gingham. You could make gray gingham if you want, any color. I wonder if you could make gingham that was one color this way and one color this way. I might have to try that. On the back of the packaging, you'll see how to use it here. Just ink it, rotate it 90 degrees, ink it again, and then here you'll end up with your gingham. So why don't we go ahead and use this and make a card? I'm gonna get started on the card by showing you how to use the stencil. I just have a piece of Mina Solar White cardstock here, and I will be using Gina K Designs Christmas Pine Ink. One thing I want to point out about the new stencil is you won't be able to ink it up in probably your normal circular motions. Because the lines are so long and I didn't want to put support pieces in the middle and get in the way of the gingham pattern, we're going to have to do this a little bit differently, so that's what I'm going to show you. I do want to contain my gingham pattern to just the middle of the card front. So I brought in a homemade oval mask and I placed that on the white cardstock before bringing in the gingham stencil. When I ink up the stencil, I like to have the lines going up and down or vertically because instead of that circular motion, we will be using a back and forth sweeping. Now, if you have pixie spray, you could prep the stencil and see if that works, but I know not all of us have that, so I wanted to show you how to make this stencil work for you. After you have gotten some ink on your brush, you're going to see here how instead of going in circular motions, I am just going back and forth top to bottom. Now sometimes you might want to start your brush at the bottom, sometimes you might want to start at the top just to get different quantities of ink all throughout, and just keep inking until you like the color that you have down. Once that first layer is down, I just rotated my cardstock and this time I did go ahead and tape that in place just so it wouldn't move any. And I did have to move my tape holding down the stencil just because it was covering up some of the lines at the end of the oval. Now you notice here that I have some grid paper behind my pieces. That is to catch any excess ink and I find that lining up my cardstock and the edges of my stencil with that help me get a nice straight gingham. Now you you can always do an angled gingham as well. Play with this, have fun with it, make it your own. After both directions were inked and I had built my gingham background, I decided since I had some extra ink on the edge of the oval mask that I would lightly blend that into the oval. This way you'll see when I do the reveal, there is just kind of like a shadow around the outside edge just to give it a fun effect. Off camera, I stamped one of the penguins from the set, and I'm just gonna quickly do some selective coloring using Spectrum Noir's Dark Red Blend Tri-Blend Marker. If you've been around my channel long, you know that coloring detailed images is not my strong suit or my favorite. So I like to find ways that I can add color without spending a lot of time. This is one of them where I might just pick one or two colors and do a little accent or spotlight coloring in the image. Since I used a more traditional Christmas green for the gingham background, that's why I chose red for today's image. Once I finished the coloring, I took it off screen and used the coordinating die to cut it out. Also, while I was off screen, I added some glossy accents to the little wrapped mint candy and I let that dry. I hope you can see it here. It just has a fun little shine to it. 
Next, I want to add the sentiment and to do this, I brought in my card front and my stamped and die cut image. I want to make sure that the sentiment will fit underneath the penguin, which I will eventually pop up with foam tape. So I set it up in my Misty and put the penguin about where it will be on the final card. And then I've used have a sweet holiday season for the sentiment at the bottom. I'm stamping this in the same Christmas pine ink and I do go ahead and ink it up and stamp it twice just so I have a nice dark sentiment that does stand out from that background with the same color. I finished this card off screen by die cutting my card front with a stitched rectangle as well as a stitched rectangle red mat. I also added some mint sprinkles I had in my stash and I put some glossy accents on those as well to match the stamped image mint. Finally, I popped my penguin up with some foam tape and on the inside I did a stamp off of the same penguin for just a little added decoration. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I put together today's card using the brand new Gingerbread Kisses mini bundle from Not Too Shabby. If you did, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you are interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box below.